Yeah, I like the nine out of ten analogy a lot because you know if it's actually nine out of ten images, okay, fine. You know, only one image had this that issue, and yeah, it's acceptable. Maybe there's a tolerance level. You know, X percent of your data set cannot have motion blur or um, focus issues. Uh, but yeah. if it's if it's the ninety percent that has the issue, then we're then you're in, in trouble. trouble. <laughs> then then in you trouble. are then you are straight back out in the field. <laughs> you're either not doing your job properly, <laughs> yeah. or there's something exceedingly wrong with your bit of yeah. kit. Yeah, unless the remaining ten percent was the only photos you needed. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh. Hi, Alex. How you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm good. I'm good. So this is our first one of these. Yeah. Um, both on screen, which is a rarity. Yeah, you see that's the, true. You see the you and very rarely me. Yeah. So um, here we are doing our first vlog, I guess it is. Yeah, you can call it that. I yeah. guess it's just a stream of consciousness. Yeah, it's a hammer missions stream of consciousness. Yes. I like it. It sounds like it could be a book. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess our agenda for today is what is high quality data? Exactly. And why, yeah. and why do we need it? Exactly. Um, I guess defining high quality data is a pretty daunting task. Um, you know, you can define it in so many different ways. But maybe we can talk about what why do we need a definition in the first place? Um why is it important to define high quality data? Uh, I mean, I guess high quality data gives you the it gives you the, the understanding of what you're what you're shooting for, why why you want to collect that particular I don't know structure object, you know whatever whatever your subject is, why mm. you want it in in high quality. What's what's the purpose behind it uh, mm. when you could just be using your camera phone? Yeah, um, exactly. So, you know, I guess it gives the option to to continue, you know, to carry out high quality work and to continue that high qual high quality work, um, and give your clients the best data that they that they require. Yeah, and and it, I guess it also gives you a way to measure what you're delivering. Um, so yeah. if you've defined what you're delivering, then you can measure yourself against it to at least know whether you're meeting your own expectations, um, yeah. if not the client's expectations. Um, so I guess having a definition you, helps with that. If you prove yourself time and time again with the data you're collecting and, you know, and, and you go back to your client and that, that client's, you know, pleased with your work and, and, you know, you've, you've collected exactly what they want, then that yeah. is a form of collecting high quality data exactly and doesn't this... necessarily have to be you know it's you know 50 megapixel photo yeah. it's it's it depends on you know on, on how you define high quality data and how they define high quality data and if you meet in the middle bingo exactly and the same applies for not just a client but also a stakeholder so you could be in a team in a in-house yeah. drone program if you know how you're defining success for your operation then you can actually make it successful because you go and sort of follow your success definition in some sense. And also, if you are in this for the long game, you're going to be probably doing many more missions apart from uh, as opposed to just one mission. So uh, repeatability becomes a lot easier when you define how you're, you're defining success. So it's essentially you're defining high quality data and you're building this repeatable workflow against that definition yep. so that um, when you come back to your client or stakeholder, they know what they're expecting you know what you're delivering and you're following that definition. Uh, but I suppose, um, I mean, I wonder what your thoughts are on this. I guess it's really use case dependent, right? So, you know, you mentioned the 50 megapixel photo, but obviously it's not just about the photo. It's about what you're trying to achieve. What's the mission? What is the goal? Yeah. I mean, there's going to be, obviously going to be a huge difference between going and doing a roof survey and then collating data for photogrammetry um the premise is still the same you're out collecting high quality data which is obviously what our, our, our vlog <laughs> is um is all about um it's all yeah i guess it's all about it's all about definition isn't it how how you how you decide how you decide you're going to process and, and push that data forward yeah i mean <clears throat> for a mapping job maybe overlap is really important because you want yeah. to process that data but for an inspection job, maybe just making sure you've covered the entire site or asset is more important. 
And so, you know, they've got two different things over here going on. Um, and they are completely dependent on the use case. Yeah. Uh, so you can't say an inspection data set is really good um, for a mapping job and a mapping data set is really good for an inspection. They've, no, they've got their own. They've got their, they've got their own categories, their own, their own pigeonholes, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it's, it, 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 it is use case dependent. Um, you know, you, you may, you may use a 50 megapixel camera, for example, for photogrammetry which you you know you wouldn't need for you know a, a gutter or a facade survey yeah if you can get close right so if you can get really up close then you get the same level of detail and exactly. you want to make sure you get the detail in an inspection job if you want to see that crack and you can't see it uh from far away you've got to get up close and so that would be yeah. a factor in the in the use case definition yeah of course um indeed it would hmm. And where do so, the clients fit in? How do you think about clients when it comes to the quality definition, I suppose? Um, do we think? I, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're uh, you're providing a service, right? So mm. <laughs> the customer is always right. <laughs> That's what I've always been told, you know, ever right. since my days back in sales, which was, feels like about a million years ago. Mm. Probably is a million years ago. Um you know the, the customer is always right if if you you know if you go back to a go back to a client with data you're not pleased with mm. the likelihood of the client's not going to be pleased with it either mm. right so but what my... about what if a customer's not sort of informed enough i mean what if they're demanding things that are just not feasible you know like get to 0 0.001 millimeter GSD and be really close to the structure and you know from a risk and quality from, perspective. I mean, from, a, from a, a risk point of view, you know, you're only gonna you're only gonna take your your aircraft or your drone as far as to the limits that you're happy with. Mm. You know, if a client comes to you and says, you know, I want you to pretty much land on that roof to take the photos, mm. you're not going to do it. The yeah. risk the risk is way too high. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you may have to, you know, depending on what what aircraft or drone you're flying, you know, mm. if the camera is not capable of of taking those photos from a risky asset from distance, then mm. you are going to have to tell your, you know, you're going to have to tell your client that, um, mm. you know, if you're if you're in the market with the, you know, the the big boys, the M300s with the P1s and the the phase one cameras, then, you know, you've you've got that covered. Mm. But you've got to be able to have those that kind of expensive asset to be able to do that. Mm. So in some sense, the customer can communicate what they want, but it's sort of your job to let the customer know this yeah. is possible and not possible. And, yeah. you know, this is how it's going to happen. Um, how do I you mean, deal with customers who are I, more prescriptive? I mean, you know, this is what happens sometimes when you've got customers that are looking over your shoulder and want to do things a certain way. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to sit in the, the survey bracket. I mean, even in the in the filming industry, which I have done in the in the past, as some of our some of our viewers, weird saying viewers, some of our viewers may well know. Um, mm -hmm. even in that industry, you know, there's only certain risks you'll take um where you could you know you could harm the not harm the public but you know you you could you could cause risks risk to yourself risk to risk to public risk to your aircraft which again in the in the survey and inspection industry is exactly the same um mm. you know you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna take massive risks um for that for that single shot it's mm -hmm. sometimes just not worth it yeah sorry yeah. i interrupted you what was your what was your next question i was, so, going, no. I was going off on one <laughs> no so i was just wondering so we've got high quality data and yeah. we've got customer requirements and i think that you know the customer has their own definition of high quality data mm -hmm. and so how do we make sure that we allow the customer to be as descriptive as possible but not as prescriptive as possible. So they're not sort of trying to sort of spoon feed on what you need to do exactly, how you need to capture it. Because that does happen, right? I mean, a customer comes in and they think that they know exactly how, you know, they, they probably have some idea of the end output yeah. they want, but sometimes they get involved in the operational side of it. And it can be quite challenging to sort of then communicate to the customer, actually, this is what you want, this is what's feasible, and this is how we're going to actually make, gonna make this happen. Um, 
But that's where a quality definition comes in because you want to sync up with your customer on what is actually achievable given the operation. So the risks that you're talking about, yeah, uh, whether it's in survey, mapping, filming, um, you got to be able to communicate that and have that encoded in the yeah Communi- communication between you and your client is is paramount. Um, you know, there's I don't, there's not a single operation mission operation filming job that I've done where I haven't been in direct communication with you know either the client or the or the director or you know line producer to be able to say this is what I can achieve. You've mm. given me these parameters. Mm-hmm. This is what I can achieve. Does this sit within within your remit? Yeah. Is, is this what you want? Because this is kind of this is what I can do. Yeah. Um, you know, there there will be times where they'll they'll try and you know they'll try and push for for more. You just have to make the the client fully aware that there are limitations. Yeah. There's Absolutely. limitations with everything, but you yeah. know, there's definitely limitations when you're you know you're flying flying a couple of thousand pounds worth of kit if not more yeah. um you know that you, you don't want to take those risks exactly yeah even, so it's... even with insurance you still don't want to take those risks <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely with insurance yeah, yeah yeah uh yeah you want to make sure you communicate that to the customer so yeah. it's sort of like you're edu- you know we're responsible to educate the customer as well aren't we you know we that they, they are right but they can be more right if you know we can kind of help them get yeah. there. Yeah, the customer is always right. Sometimes the customer is always right with a little bit of help. Yeah. A little bit <laughs> of a push, a, a little bit of push it. in the right direction. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. As long um, as you communicate to the client what what you're able to do. Yeah. Uh it from the offset, then they 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 know what's achievable. Exactly. Yeah, we got there so, in the end. I got, I got, yeah. I kind of went a long way around it. By <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, okay, let's say, let's make this more specific now. So, I mean, we've been talking many different types of jobs, uh, yeah. but let's say specifically to mapping and inspection. Um, what might be some of the metrics that you use for a quality definition? So um, let's say you, you have, um, let's take a cell tower uh, as an inspect, uh, as an example, you want to inspect yeah. a cell tower. Um what might be some of the some of the metrics on which you're gonna score your data for quality or non-quality, you know? Um so do things come to mind? Um, um, um I I, mean, I I would think that coverage is again quite important. Have you do you see all parts of the tower clearly from the data set? Yeah, I mean it's this it's the same with any any sort of style of survey and inspection. Mm. You know, you're gonna want to see the whole asset. There's no yeah. point in in just taking you know, seven or eight photos and going, cool. You know, that's, that's, that's a few, that's a few sides of it. Happy days because you never know what you might miss. Um, Mm. So, you know, quality of data can, can come in, you know, not only, you know, does the, does the picture look pretty, um, Mm -hmm. you know, how much data is there? Is my whole asset covered? Mm. Can I see everything I need to see? You know, have I missed uh, you know, cell tower for example you you know you don't take too many shots you may miss a cable that's frayed or or broken yeah so um the amount of data you've collected or the amount of photos that have been taken are also you know they're they're, they're very high up there you you need them yeah and i guess what's closely related is the concept of gsd um, yes ground sampling distance which i suppose this should really be called surface sampling distance when you're doing facade or cell tower <laughs> but uh yeah. you really <laughs> it's not always ground is it you're but, not looking at the ground uh, you're always looking, looking at, at a ground. wall yeah um so gsd or ssd um yeah um i guess it, that also matters because it kind of defines how close or far, far you are from the object That's of correct. interest yeah um and what level of detail you're capturing so if you're looking for a crack uh mm-hmm. on a on a wall uh and you are you know 500 meters away you're not going to see that crack on that not wall see that. <laughs> no not even with a not even with a 50 megapixel camera you might <laughs> you might see the brick but that probably be about it yeah yeah um you know that it is important obviously you know you've you've got to fly as safely as you possibly can you don't want to be hugging the wall but yeah. you know a safe di- a safe distance with an acceptable GSD, you're gonna get you're gonna get some great imagery out of it. 
yeah. as we as we have proven with some of our our test cases you know yeah. we've we've got some we've got some really good some really good high high definition photos yeah exactly and i guess uh going back to the original points of communicating that with the customer i guess mm. a concept like gsd can be really hard right i mean it's very hard to say my data is going to be high quality it's going to be one centimeter gsd or less and then a lot of customers don't even understand what gsd is yeah a customer won't won't you know the moment you mention gsd they kind of huh? go blank yeah um so it's you know it's it's explaining to the to the customer you know when you're talking about gsd for example is the distance of how close you can actually get to your to your asset um yeah. and how that assets how that asset's going to look at mm -hmm. that particular distance yeah. i mean i guess in layman terms is you know you don't want to be flying 500 meters away because you're not yeah. gonna, you're not going to get the the definition or the detail that you want yeah so we yeah. would fly we would fly closer therefore bringing the ground sampling distance or yeah side sampling distance or whatever you want to call it yeah. uh you know down down lower to give you a better yeah. quality of image yeah or you could change the camera so or if if it's available i mean if the if you're flying something like a um m300 yeah. you have the option to change your camera um for those people that are lucky enough to 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 fly surveys with an m300 other people flying you know the the, the mavic 2 enterprise um you know won't be able to change camera but some do have a zoom capability yeah so it all just depends it also depends on your you know on your equipment as exactly. well exactly so i guess if the customer says uh i want to have this level of detail but you can only get this close um then i guess the only option is to change the camera because you know yep. you can't get closer and you can't get better resolution with that gsd change the no. camera maybe that's a better idea um, if you don't have the camera, you may have to white label the job to someone else. Um, yeah. If it's really that important to the to the client and you can't provide it, yeah. then you know you may have to look at other options. Yeah, or if you're an in-house team, I mean, you can always procure a camera. Um, That's and, right. You can you can hire yeah. a camera in. Um, yeah. You know, if you've got the you know, if you've got an M three hundred and M six hundred, you know, just you can change the camera. Yeah. Quite quite easily. Yeah. And the other thing, so we've talked about GSD, talked about coverage. Yeah. Um, um, the other thing that a lot of that catches a lot of people is, you know, you go to the site, you capture the data, you feel everything's great, you come back to the office, you upload the data, you're oh, about I've to process there. it. You're <laughs> like, it does not have enough overlap. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're like, what, what happened? I mean, you know, you thought you'd set the settings to 70%, but maybe you were capturing a building and you were capturing the roof of a building and you'd set it to 70% and you're at 50 meters altitude, uh, but the building was at 20 meters and maybe you didn't take that into account. And yeah. The overlap was on the ground, not on the roof of the building. That's right. And you come back, you're like, oh, no, I don't have enough overlap. <laughs> and you don't want to go back to the site. So um, another place where I guess quality definition should incorporate some level of overlap definition, you know, what overlap yeah, yeah, yeah. do you want and on what surface and how close do you need to get, um, especially if you're doing a mapping job, um, maybe not so much by inspection. Um, although... It is, again, important to sort of have the photos somewhat overlap, even in inspection, to know what you're looking at. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if they're, if they're too if they're too separated, you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to tell one one part of your photo from the other. So even a small overlap in, in, in um, you know, an in inspection and is, you know, is acceptable. Obviously, when you get up to photogrammetry, you're looking at uh, looking at 80 percent. Yeah, really high. Yeah. And. Yeah, and that's just unfortunately that's just how photogrammetry works. You just need to be able to get um a lot of different angles of the same subject um for the photos to align. Um and yeah, so it kind of you know, overlap is definitely an important thing. Mm -hmm. Um so we've talked GSD coverage, overlap. Um what are we missing? Well, what are some of the things um uh, that should part form a part of quality definition uh, for mapping or an inspection job, maybe? accuracy yeah you know how how accurate you know positional accuracy of the drone 
Yeah, That's, I guess it all yeah. depends on the drone, right? I mean, some in some yeah. sense, we can't we we only integrate with the drone and let the drone control the accuracy. That's right. Uh, so if if the drone has an RTK system, um, but the, the base station involved, um, then we you know we can enable a high quality data capture or a high accuracy data capture. Um, but if there is no base station and the RTK is not available, then the best you're going to get is about a two meter. Um, yeah. error or tolerance on the gs on the gps and um there's no no real way around it apart from just um getting rtk i think some people look at so there's ground control points and then there is also ppk side of it um yep. so to improve accuracy um so um yeah that you know that whole whole sort of infrastructure needs to be thought through um because even with RTK, there's just I mean, as we've discovered in the past, RTK can sometimes be a little tetchy depending on where you are. Mm. Um, you know, once it's up and running, the accuracy is high. Um, but obviously, we've had ground station issues before where it just doesn't pick up or it takes an age to pick up. Yeah. So I guess you know, time scalability as well. You know, if you're a, if it's if it's something you need to get done quickly. Mm. You're, you know and you've got no time to wait around for rtk yeah then you're gonna have to rely on on gps yeah exactly um yeah you gotta have to do the you know do the best with what you've got yeah. um i guess ground control points from that point of view is a lot more manageable and controllable because yep. as long as you can access the site completely and put these ground control points up um but outside of that to think um, yeah, RTK can can always be a challenge in the field, whether or not you get the signal. Um, and so that is still improving as a technology. I think we're still in that sort of improvement yeah. curve where... I mean, know. even even GPS, you know, depending on how many satellites your, your unit picks up before you decide to fly, even that can sometimes be a, be a bother. Um, yeah. I mean, luckily, you know, it doesn't happen very often. Mm. Um, but yeah yeah even you know even decent drone kit does have a wobble every yeah. now and again yeah as i, I guess, experienced a few times yeah i guess those things are out of our control in some sense yeah. like um but what we can control let's say is the image quality you know so yeah we, we can make sure that every image is taken as sharply as possible devoid yeah. of motion blur devoid of focus issues and which does happen you know you you do get the odd photo that is out of focus because the drones just suddenly lost yeah focus. i mean even you know some of the stuff that we've we've tested over the last couple of months you know there's there's been times where a couple of shots have either been out of focus or you know the unit hasn't run exactly how we'd want it to run so you might have missed a shot that's you know that's focused somewhere else and not where you need it um you know there's but nine times out of ten you know it's it we're able to collect that data in its high quality format yeah you know which which you know would be ideal for a, a potential client or yeah. stakeholder yeah i like the nine out of ten analogy a lot because you know if it's actually nine out of ten images okay fine you know only one image had this that issue and yeah, it's acceptable. Maybe there's a tolerance level. You know, X percent of your data set cannot have motion blur or um, focus issues. Uh, but yeah. if it's if it's the ninety percent that has the issue, then we're then you're in, in trouble. trouble. Then, then you trouble. are then you are straight back out in the field. You're either not doing your job properly, <laughs> yeah. or there's something exceedingly wrong with your bit of yeah. kit. Yeah, unless the remaining ten percent was the only photos you needed. <laughs> yeah, for some or the reason. only fo or the only photos it took. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, image quality is more under your control in some sense. If you're vigilant yes. and you kind of like are monitoring the drone. And this is one of the things where I think people get automation wrong. Even though things are so automated, you still need to have hands on stick and yeah. eyes on camera and, you know, make you sure. Need to, you need an input. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't just go, well, it's there it goes. I'm just going to sit here and drink my can of Coke and soak up the sun for the yeah. next 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, you, you do have to, although it's automated, yes. But you have to make sure that bit of kit is doing exactly what you've programmed it to do or what, you know, or what you've asked it to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and if if there is an issue, you're there to take control, bring it back down or do whatever, refocus, you know, refocus the camera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. You know, there's yeah. a safety, there's obviously a safety aspect behind that as well. 
absolutely so i think as a, as a pilot so you're first first and foremost you're ensuring the safety of the operation and then secondly you're making sure that the quality of the data is as high as possible yeah. based on the definition um because the drone by itself doesn't do any of those two things. Yes, it's no. got obstacle avoiding sensors, but it's still not going to be able to understand situational awareness when you know no. you've got a helicopter or an airplane in the sky. And yes, it's got automation to take pictures in the right places, but it doesn't know uh, when a focus issue has happened or yeah. if something has been obscured in the shot. So we're still not there where you know it can actually understand quality definitions. Yeah, um, and that's that's the role of the operator. Uh, it will the... happen sooner or later, but not for a, not for a while. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, not today. <laughs> not today. No, when yeah. when AI finally takes over the world and Terminator Two is perfect, <laughs> then, then we can take we, we can do that sort of thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's very underappreciated. Because I think a lot of people think the role of the pilot is to just take off the drone, but no, actually, the pilot plays such an important role in terms of the risk profile of the job and also yep. the quality profile of the job. And those things are so inherently complex that you can't automate them at all. And um, and that kind of um, brings me to kind of like, even if you do a great job, how do you then score that job against another job? And how do you sort of say, well, actually, if you're doing five different surveys, how do you say the fifth one was better than the first one? I guess even if we've talked about all these different things like GSD coverage, um, resolution of the data, image quality, um, you've got to have some way of scoring the data. Um, I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's all about you really. Um, you know, it's a learning curve, mm -hmm. a massive learning curve, mm -hmm. you know, your, your quality, it, it can change over time. You'll learn, different methods and different ways of doing different missions, different shoots. Mm -hmm. um, but it's being able to, it's being able to do that is how to win it. I think, you know, mm -hmm. you, you just, you continue doing your thing, learning on the job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, over, over time, you'll score your, you'll score yourself higher and higher Does that makes sense am i talking yeah. rubbish yeah no that, i mean yeah you're sort of saying you know you will just learn from the feedback on the yeah. job right like you'll see when some photo was out of focus or some gsd was not how it was supposed to be and yeah. then you'll fix it the next time and um so i think that is definitely the right way to keep honing it every single time it's just a it's a learning curve like anything you know mm -hmm. you, you when i first started using hammer for example it was all a massive learning curve it mm -hmm. still is but I can now, you know, I know I can now go to the product. I know exactly where everything is, exactly how I want to put it together. Mm -hmm. And I will go and fly the mission. And then yeah. when I come back, I might go, actually, maybe I could have done that better or I could have been lower yeah. or, you know, I could have set my distance to target a bit closer. And yeah. it's, you know, you're constantly, constantly learning. And obviously, as we bring out new missions and change the way missions work um, and bring out sort of new features, Again, we'll begin to learn how to use the product, but we'll take everything we've already learned and adapt it to the new mm. stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I think I think it just goes. Um, you know, we're a tool that's used in the industry, so we're helping people follow their quality definitions. Yeah. So, in some sense, we've got to be open-minded about um, how does the tool need to improve to help people capture their their quality data better. Um, and help them do that. Um, so I think just what I mentioned about overlap and ground offsets. Yeah. When we realize people are not having the right amount of overlap, um, we introduced the ground offset feature for roof surveys, um, or, or the focus before pictures feature. Of when you get to the, you get to a waypoint, the drone focuses the image. Yeah, before stop, it takes it, stop yeah. the focus and carries on going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are just sort of tools. At the end of the day, um, you still, you know, the as as an operator. Uh, whether you're part of an in-house drone team or or you are um, providing drone services, you are responsible for the deliverable. Uh, and yeah. then Hammer is just a tool that you use to yeah. get there. It's just a means to an end, really. So, um, but um, I guess having that definition, quality definition, helps you um, a understand what is expected from you, and also communicates to the, to the stakeholder what is 
what they can expect uh, as a deliverable. Yeah. Um, which I think is a conversation as an industry we're not having enough. So, you know, people uh, people still sort of, people want to get a drone survey, but they don't really know what they're going to get at the end. And I think we're still in that yeah. phase where it needs to be yeah, defined a bit it, more. It's it's getting your client to understand what is achievable with the tools we've got. Mm. Um, you know, it's not always... <laughs> it's not always easy to talk to a client and, and describe exactly what you're, you know, what you are going to achieve and, and the sort of pictures you're going to, you're going to be able to take. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can send them examples, et cetera, et cetera. But I think most, most clients in the past for me before using hammer um, where I've done roof surveys for a first time, you know, I've kind of gone, they've done it on a whim. It's kind of an experiment for them. And you go away, you do the roof survey and you you give them the data and they're blown away mm. because they haven't had to get scaffolding up. They haven't had to get a cherry picker or, you know, some dude with some ropes to come and, you know, rope it off a roof to have a look. <laughs> you know, you're up there, you get the shots, um, you know, you send them, the, you send them the, the data, you invoice them, probably a hell of a lot cheaper than someone with a cherry picker or scaffolding. And they've got their data back in no time at all. They yeah. don't even have to send someone onto the roof to have a look yeah. because you know, your drone's gone up there and taken all the shots they need already. Exactly, yeah. And if you're an in-house drone team, it's the same thing where you know you don't really have to contract out this job. You can do it whenever you want, yeah. whenever you need the data. It's sort of on-demand data at this point. Exactly. Uh, and you know, um, we, we're sort of seeing things where teams and companies are so autonomous that they just have their drone to be able to go and do a survey whenever they need to. Uh, And sometimes I've seen teams go and refly the same job without speaking to each other, which is probably a a level of inefficiency (laughs) that shouldn't exist. But everyone's so excited to do drone surveys in these enterprises that you feel that they're just going out there and collecting data. Um, Uh, And, you know, the other thing is we're still a very, very young industry. Yeah. You know, there's so much, there's still so much more, to give that you know the drone industry there's still so much more of it that's going to happen um it's just been really interesting to see where it all goes yeah automation is is the first step i think yeah Yeah. and i guess a quality definition is an important important sort of step alongside it because it's it's a massive it's a it's a massive part of that that step is having the you know, not only is is what you're doing automated, uh, therefore cutting down on time and resources and making your life easier or, the, you know, your stakeholder, your client's life easier. Um, you know, if you've got the quality to run alongside that, yeah, then, you know, the world's your oyster, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. And I guess that's how you differentiate yourself, whether if you're providing a service or even as a team within a company. Yeah. Um, and probably that's how you win. Uh, yeah. Winning. <laughs> as um charlie sheen once said i do believe so there yeah. you go brilliant cool. all right hey, good chat that, that was good chat yeah yeah talked and, through um, quite a few things yeah. we did and i guess if anyone's got any comments they can chuck them in the comments bits down here somewhere or will yeah. be anyway and <laughs> um uh you know you can always get hold of us on team at hammermissions.com and um yeah thanks yeah. for watching yeah thanks for watching we'll see you around yeah cheers all Cheers, bye. Cheers, bro. Bye. Bye.